this video is about spectral processing. We've already acquired an FID, which is what we measure by pulsed Fourier transform NMR spectroscopy, and we no longer need the spectrometer. I may go to any computer with any up-to-date NMR processing software to continue with the next steps. As with all the videos and instructions in this series, what is demonstrated is neither the only way nor is it comprehensive, but it is sufficient to get you going. For this video, I will stay here at the DPX200 spectrometer. This is running Topspin 1.3 on a CentOS 5 operating system. Nonetheless, the ideas behind the spectral processing steps are generalizable to any software. Are you ready? We're on step number nine, processing. The acquisition tab is highlighted in the menu. This is our acquisition window. To go from the time domain to the frequency domain, we'll type FT for Fourier transform. And the program has autom automatically changed to the spectrum tab, which is now highlighted. We're also in this green window, number one. In newer versions of Topspin, the acquisition window is part of the experiment number tab. To enhance the sensitivity at the expense of the resolution using an exponential function, or to enhance resolution at the expense of the sensitivity or the signal to noise ratio using a Gaussian function, I can go to processing window multiplication and choose manual window adjustment. But if my sample is still in the magnet, I usually skip the window functions for now, so that if I need to enhance sensitivity, I'll just add a few more transients with the command go. Or if I need to improve resolution, I'll try to shim even better and then start a new acquisition from scratch. Of course, if I'm processing at another date, after the sample is long gone, these window functions can still be used to improve the presentation of the spectrum. Now we'd like to display our spectral lines as pure positive absorption peaks. This is called the phase correction. We can type APK enter at the command line for an automatic phase correction. If we're still not as satisfied, we can go into the interactive phase correction mode with the first of these five processing buttons here. We know that we're in phase correction mode since we have this yellow icon here. We can't go into another mode until we leave this one. I will click and hold down the left mouse button on zero, and you can see the effect as I move the mouse forward and back while still holding down the left mouse button. It affects the largest peak in the window around the red line. Once I'm satisfied with the phase that's symmetric, I'll mouse over the one and hold down the left mouse button and move my hand back and forth until the signal furthest away from the red line is well phased. These arrows will increase and decrease the sensitivity of the mouse. Once I'm satisfied, I'll click on this button decorated with the image of a floppy disk and return arrow to save the changes and leave the phase correction mode. There, no more yellow icon in the corner. Where were the zero order and first order phase corrections saved? Here in the processing parameters tab, we've got two parameters, PHC0 and PHC1. We have some other interesting parameters here. One is SI, the number of points in the frequency domain. Do you remember the topspin parameter name for the number of points in the time domain? It was TD. We set SI larger than TD for zero filling. This adds extra points spaced DW apart to the tail end of our acquired signal. After Fourier transform, those extra points intercalate between the experimental points, which can give a smoother appearance to the peaks of the spectrum since the program is drawing lines between each of the points. Over here are window function parameters. So to enhance the apparent sensitivity at the expense of resolution, I can multiply the FID by an exponential function before the Fourier transform. Let's choose something subtle, like an LB of 0.3 Hz. Now how do I implement it? I'll type EFP, enter and the computer will first multiply the FID by the exponent, that's the E, and then Fourier transform, that's the F, and then use the phasing that's stored in the PHC0 and PHC1 values, that's the P. EFP, enter, and here's our spectrum, 
with some sensitivity enhancement for, for, for smoother peaks. If I want to see the SI points, I can right click to pull up this menu and choose display properties. There we go. Show data points. Okay. To zoom in, I can left click, hold down the mouse button, and drag the mouse to the other side and release. One last processing parameter that I want to show you is this SR value or signal reference. It's where the calibration of the chemical shift is stored. By using the lock interface inside Topspin, the chemical shift of chloroform should be pretty close to its literature value. Let's see how to set the chloroform to an exact reference value. First we go to the spectrum. The second of the five processing buttons is the chemical shift calibration. First, I'll zoom in on the chloroform peak. We'll take one of its literature values relative to TMS to calibrate the x-axis. Let's take a moment to see what these buttons along the top do. Times 2, divided by 2, times 8, divided by 8. This is an interactive scale button. I put the mouse arrow on top of the icon, hold down the left mouse button, and then move my hand back and forth. There are three more interactive mouse buttons. This one for expansion. And I move my hand left and right with the mouse button depressed. This one for left and right shifting. And this one for up and down. These two buttons automatically give a full Y and full X display respectively. This one and this one. Let's zoom in again. Left click drag to the other side, and release. We can zoom in so that we can see the peak very clearly. And this one button with the magnifying glass with an A does the same as those two last clicks together. And here we have a magnifying glass with an E, which is an exact zoom, say from 10 to 0 ppm. Okay. We were on calibration. I'll calibrate the chloroform signal to 7.26 ppm according to one of the literature values. I click on the calibration icon. I'm in calibration mode. I click on the peak, 7.26 ppm. When I write up the experimental section of my thesis, my poster, and my article, I will write that I calibrated the residual proton signal of the deuterated chloroform to 7.26 ppm. Let's check back on our SR value in the Processing Parameters tab. That's where the calibration is stored. Here's our new value, 152.4 instead of 0. The next processing step is to correct the baseline. The baseline is straight and is at 0, so the correction won't have much of an impact. The automatic correction is done by typing ABS and then Enter. There, and now the baseline is still straight and on 0. A well-defined baseline is particularly important for integration of the peaks. The next thing I want to do is called peak picking. I will type PPEF, enter, and each peak now has a label with its chemical shift. I can have more control by entering peak picking mode. In peak, in peak picking mode, I can draw a box. I can modify the size of the box with this M here. I can do manual peak picking by clicking on this and clicking on the peaks of interest. To exit peak picking mode, I click on the floppy disk to return and save. Now I want to know the relative areas of the two different peaks. What I haven't done is to make sure that each of the two peaks fully relax before acquiring the next FID, in order that there won't be some unknown scaling factor between the two proton signals. That's fine for a standard NR spectrum, but if I need to quantify the relative peaks with any certainty, I will need to measure the T1 relaxation time constant for the slowest relaxing peak of interest, and then be sure to set my acquisition parameters so that AQ plus D1 is greater than or equal to 5 times T1. Let's see how we integrate regardless. To integrate, I should type ABS, but we already did that for the baseline correction. To see the integration, I can go into integration mode with this button. If I right-click, I have some options here. Calibrate, normalize, glass scale, delete.
save and exit, I click on the floppy disk, and there we are. Let me print a hard copy. I'll right click to display the title, integrals, peak picking. I can arrange things on the screen how I want. And now I can type PRNT enter, or I can just click on this print screen. To print from the command line, I type print without the I. Here the printer is the HP LJ2200. In the next and final short video, we'll use a different sample to quickly recap, plus a few bonuses.